Hey guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering syllabus section 2.2, Levels of Organization. Now what this section really wants you to be able to do is just relate the structure of the following. So ciliated cells, root hair cells, xylem vessels, palisade cells, nerve cells, red blood cells, and sperm and egg cells. Um, uh, relate the structure of each of these cells to their functions. So what we're going to be doing is just going through each of these and uh, describing how their structures relate to uh, the functions that they're made to be able to do. So first of all, ciliated cells. Now these cells are cells that are found in our respiratory linings and um, they've got these hair-like extensions called cilia on the tip of their cells. Now what this is um, what this is for is, is to push up something called mucus up towards our throat. Now what mucus is, is just this viscous, um, very thick, sticky substance that is created by something called goblet cells and um, its purpose is to trap uh, things like dust and bacteria that has entered our respiratory system and obviously we don't want that so mucus is something that traps that and the ciliated cells with uh, their cilia pushes that mucus up towards our throat so that it can be removed from our body. Next up is root hair cells. Now I've drawn a very simple diagram of this tree here and um, down below are the roots of the tree and I've just enlarged a very small portion of that, uh, that root. Okay? And as you can see, this big bulk is the root and it has these little extensions on it. Now these cellular extensions on plant roots are what you call root hair cells. Um, and their purpose is to maximize the surface area for absorption of nutrients in the soil because um, that's what the purpose of roots are. Okay. Next up is the xylem vessels. Now, xylem vessels are pretty interesting in the fact that originally they are these long thin walls uh, of cells that are lined like so. So they're lined, aligned end to end. Now, what happens is that the ends of these cell walls disappear over time, okay? And it ends up um, producing this hollow kind of hollow structure or a vessel, if you'd like to call it. And um, while doing so, all the cell contents um, within the cell gets removed. Now, the purpose of these xylem vessels are to transport uh, water and mineral ions from the roots all the way up to the leaves. Um, so it makes sense that uh, the xylem vessels don't actually have any cell contents because or else it would prevent um, the, uh, the flow of water up towards the leaves and that wouldn't be any good. Um, another important feature of these xylem vessels are the fact that it has um, lignified walls. Now what it means by lignified walls is that the walls of the xylem vessels have something called lignin in it. Now lignin is uh, a very strong substance that tends to strengthen the vessel. Now that's important because if the vessels get strengthened, uh, the stem also gets uh, strengthened as well and that overall helps to support the plant. Next up is the palisade mesophyll cells. Now. I've just drawn another simple diagram of um, a leaf here and uh, this big diagram here is just showing the transverse section of this leaf and uh, different layers of um, what is inside this leaf. Now you can pause the video and just take a look at um, the different layers but we are really only concerned about one layer at this point and it's the palisade mesophyll layer. Now the palisade mesophyll layer uh, consists of um, a series of palisade cells which are very specifically um, optimized for photosynthesis and I'll tell you why in a minute. So first of all you can see that uh, the cells are very close to the surface, uh, the upper surface of the leaf. Now this is uh, important because this is where the light hits the leaf in the first place so uh, this positioning um, allows these cells to gain maximal light exposure. And 
Second of all, they have a lot of these things called chloroplasts represented by these green dots here. And you, as we have covered uh, previously, chloroplasts are where photosynthesis happens. So it makes sense for palisade cells to have a lot of it. Uh, lastly, these palisade cells have a pretty big vacuole which tends to push the contents, um, most importantly the chloroplasts, out towards the edges of the cell where light exposure is at its maximum. Okay. Next up is the nerve cells which uh, specializes in the conduction and transmission of impulses within the body. Now, there are certain things about this uh, cell here that um, allows it to be optimal for this process. So first of all, they are pretty long cells and um, they've got connections um, at the top of the cell and at the bottom of the cell which um, allows it to be connected to other neurons or other nerve cells for the impulse to run throughout the body. Um, also they've got a layer, well, not all, but some have a layer of insulation uh, which helps to speed up the transmission of the impulses. Next up is red blood cells, and uh, you are probably familiar with this already, but red blood cells specialize in the transport of oxygen. Um, now, it does this in a way where, first of all, um, within the middle of the red blood cell, you've got something called hemoglobin, which is the protein that binds to oxygen in the first place. Another special feature about red blood cells is they don't have a nucleus like uh, most other cells. Now this is important because it allows more space for hemoglobin and in doing so more oxygen to be carried uh, by the red blood cells. Lastly their shape is of a circular biconcave shape which um, maximizes the surface area for oxygen transport. Lastly sperm and egg cells uh, which specialize in reproduction. So we're just going to be looking at sperm cells first, uh, which have a very pointy head um, and it contains enzymes to be able to penetrate uh, the egg. Uh, the nucleus represented here has only half the original amount of chromosomes, which makes sense because it needs to be combined, um, combined with the egg nucleus to produce um, a new cell with the normal amount of uh, chromosomes. And lastly, it has a tail. Uh, which allows it to swim to the egg because the point of entry of the sperm um, is actually pretty far away from where the egg actually is so it needs a lot of energy to be able to um, get there in the first place. Uh, secondly, you've got the egg cells which have walls that are actually thin enough for the sperm to penetrate in the first place and um, once again the nucleus only contains half the original number of chromosomes so that it can produce the full number once combined and fertilized with the egg. So thank you very much, uh, that is it for today and um, I'll see you next episode.